Path of Exile is a fantastic game full of opportunities to craft your own unique flavor of room-clearing explosion, but it's one of those games you kind of need a PhD in to properly understand. There's a lot of things in Path of Exile the game just doesn't thoroughly explain, sometimes on purpose, and it makes it an intimidating game to learn to play. The first and most infamous indicator of this complexity is the massive skill tree, over a thousand nodes strong. When a new player presses the P key for the first time, they will most likely be confused by this mess of lines and icons that seems to go on forever. The upside is that once you learn this mess, it's set in stone, and it won't change between characters. You only have to learn the skill tree one time, and it will stay largely the same for as long as you decide to play. The goal of this guide isn't necessarily to run down every single nuance of that skill tree, and how good every single skill is. Instead, I want to share with you my own mental map of the tree, and some of the landmarks I found along the way. The broad structure of the skill tree in Path of Exile is derived from what's in each class's starting area, and can be further abstracted by the stats those classes rely on. Strength is a stat associated with red skill gems, armor-based gear, life, and heavy melee damage. Strength is also associated with dealing fire damage, although more so with attacks than spells. Dexterity is the stat associated with green skill gems, evasion-based gear, evasion rating, and projectile weapons. Dexterity also gets some strong support for mark skills, cold damage, critical strikes, and the blind status effect. Intelligence is the stat associated with blue skill gems, energy shield-based gear, mana, and spell damage. Spellcasters will want to invest heavily into the upper third of the skill tree, as several very strong spell nodes live there. There are also three large passive clusters on the very top that offer powerful bonuses to each of the elemental damage types. Marauder, Ranger, and Witch are considered pure strength, dexterity, and intelligence classes respectively, with the easiest access to the nodes that do the things those stats want to do. Templar, Shadow, and Duelist are considered hybrid classes, sitting between two of the aforementioned classes, allowing them easy access to some of the strongest nodes for the pure play styles, as well as the ability to path more easily to things that would be hard for some of those classes to reach. Scion is a special case. Her role as a true hybrid class means that she starts in the very center of the tree and can take advantage of any valuable nodes that she'd like. Also, her ascendancy allows her to spec into several of the things that other ascendancies offer, making it easy to hybridize between some of the things that other ascendancies are individually good at. Some of the areas where the hybrid classes start have sub-themes of their own. For instance, the majority of the important trap and mine nodes are near where the shadow starts, and the Templar start has several strong totem nodes nearby. There's a lot more to it than this, but consider this a jumping off point when you're trying to find nodes on the skill tree that benefit you. There are four major types of nodes in Path of Exile's skill tree. The first and most common is what's referred to as a travel node. These nodes only give raw stats, strength, dexterity, or intelligence, which aren't going to help you gain power too quickly. However, the spacing of these nodes allows for point-efficient navigation of the skill tree. A well-built tree will use many of these travel nodes to get to the passives that are actually important. The first type of important node on the tree is a small passive node. These are minor boosts to secondary stats like life, critical chance, and evasion, without any unique effects. These nodes add up over time, but aren't too flashy. The real nodes to look out for are your notable skills, shown as larger icons with a spiky border surrounding them. Notables are most often behind a large cluster of small passives that give similar effects, and will usually have significantly more of the stats that those small nodes will give, alongside a unique or otherwise powerful additional effect. Sometimes a notable could just be a shit ton of life, sometimes it converts physical damage into fire damage, sometimes it makes war cries bigger and faster. The majority of the power on your passive tree will come from these notable skills, and notables will therefore be one of the key things to consider when constructing your path. The final type of node is referred to as a keystone. These big and obvious single nodes are more powerful than pretty much any other type of node on the skill tree, but often come with build-defining downsides. A build that utilizes chaos inoculation has to keep in mind that any investment into life, which is usually a highly desired stat, will be wasted. If you aren't doing that much physical damage, Avatar of Fire will be a hindrance more than a benefit. However, both of these nodes come with significant upsides that can be a massive power boost to a build that can properly utilize it. An easy way to find notables for the build that you're theorycrafting is to keep an eye out for these little icons on clusters of skills. It allows you to tell at a glance that this cluster of passives supports a certain playstyle, like two-handed weaponry or traps. If you can't see the icons well enough, or already have all the nodes you can easily find, consider using Control f to search the tree for the specific stat you want. For example, I can type in Leeched as Life, and it will highlight every node that gives life leech, even the ones in my ascendancy. Throughout the skill tree, there are some odd-looking nodes labeled as jewel sockets. On the very edge of the tree, there are also large jewel sockets, which look a little more fancy. 
Using a passive point to unlock any type of jewel socket on the tree doesn't do anything on its own. For you to benefit from that passive point, you need a jewel, which is an item that drops in the world like any other piece of gear. You can consider a jewel to be like a notable skill that can roll random modifiers like the items do. Because jewels can have up to four modifiers from a very large pool of potential benefits, jewel sockets can be as, if not more, effective than a notable that's part of the standard skill tree. Certain builds also take advantage of unique jewels, like the sought-after Thread of Hope, and some specific skills come with unique jewels that make them stronger when slotted into the skill tree. The large jewel sockets on the edges of the skill tree are for a special type of jewel called a cluster jewel. These jewels drop from delirium encounters, which begin spawning later into the campaign, and act as smaller, modular skill trees that can extend off of the existing tree with their own set of notables. If that sounds insane, that's because it is. A well-rolled cluster jewel that supports a desirable archetype can fetch a very high price on the player market, and some high-end builds like Herald and Aura Stackers use cluster jewels as a replacement for most of the passive tree. With all the things I've been talking about in regards to the skill tree, the choice of character has rarely come up. The real draw to specific player classes is their set of ascendancies. Ascendancies are specializations that offer very strong and often unique passive skills to support certain playstyles. You ascend for the first time by doing all of the Trials of Ascendancy up to Act 3 when you reach the Sarn Encampment. Then you head to the Aspirant's Plaza and do the dungeon there, keeping in mind that dying means you start over. I'm not going to go over each Ascendancy right now because I want to keep this video focused, so keep in mind that your choice of Ascendancy is usually a build-defining one. Make sure to take your time looking at what each of them offers. Some Ascendancies will offer surprising synergies. I was watching a video just today where someone was doing a bow-centric build that focused on stacking accuracy, and they were playing a Juggernaut instead of a Deadeye because Juggernauts has a powerful accuracy node. At this point, we've covered a lot of the broader concepts behind navigating the skill tree, so I'd like to point out some passive skills that I find particularly useful. If your build is relying mainly on evasion to survive, it's almost required to pick up the acrobatics and phase acrobatics keystones near the ranger starting area. Evasion works on an entropy system, which ensures that attacks will eventually hit you, so having a 30% chance to dodge after failing an evasion check is a pretty significant boost to your effective health. These nodes also pair excellently with the nearby Wind Dancer Keystone to make any evasion-based build much more tanky overall. The Life Rectangle in the very center of the skill tree on the strength side holds Constitution, which is the largest individual life node on the standard skill tree. If you're a regular viewer of build guides, you're probably aware of this node, as nearly every build cares about life in some way. The hybrid Evasion Life and Evasion Energy Shield nodes between the Ranger and Shadow Starts are a very accessible source of defenses on classes that often end up squishier than their pure life counterparts. I like to pick this wheel up sometime after I grab Phase Acrobatics. While it may seem a little counterintuitive, many classes' starting locations have a ton of useful nodes, like Shadow's strong critical support and Marauder's easy access to the largest chunk of health regeneration you can get from a single node on the standard tree. Originally, I put a whole section at this part of the video where I made a decent but simple Cyclone Slayer build as an example, but it ended up being a third of the length of the whole script. The reality is that, even after taking all this time just to explain my thought process, a lot of the learning curve with the skill tree is just down to experience. Don't be afraid to look up a build guide for the skill you're using and ask yourself why do they take each of these notable skills. Over the time, you'll get the lay of the land and start understanding which nodes are powerful for your theme. You aren't expected to navigate a city the day that you get there. Sometimes you have to call a taxi and give them the address of the place you're trying to go. Once you've done this enough times, you'll get a sense of things. Then you can worry about all the other ways you can build your character out, like gem links, anointments, corruption, gear, pantheons, influences, item bases, crafting methods, and enchantments. Who said this game was complicated? I hope this video was informative for you and gave an idea of where to even start when it comes to understanding this beautiful, convoluted mess of a game. I've been playing Path of Exile a lot since I joined during Heist League, and even after nearly 800 hours clocked on Steam, I barely feel like I understand the game systems. Hell, I haven't even beaten my first Cyrus yet after three leagues. That's nearly a year. Don't feel bad if you have to rethink things or start things over from scratch. Remember, if it came easy, it wouldn't be fun.